The Sinaloa Cartel, Spanish, Cartel de Sinaloa, also known as the Guzman Lora Organization, the Pacific Cartel, the Federation and the Blood Alliance, is a large international drug trafficking, money laundering, and organized crime syndicate established during the late 1980s. The cartel is primarily based in the city of Culiacan, Sinaloa, with operations in the Mexican states of Baja California, Durango, Sonora, and Chihuahua. The Federation was partially splintered when the Beltran Leva brothers broke apart from the Sinaloa cartel. The United States intelligence community considers the Sinaloa cartel the most powerful drug trafficking organization in the world, and in 2011, the Los Angeles Times called it Mexico's most powerful organized crime group. The Sinaloa cartel operates in the Golden Triangle, the states of Sinaloa, Durango, and Chihuahua. The region is a major producer of Mexican opium and marijuana. According to the U.S. Attorney General, the Sinaloa cartel was responsible for importing into the United States and distributing nearly 200 short tons, 180t, of cocaine and large amounts of heroin between 1990 and 2008. According to the National Drug Intelligence Center, within the U.S. the Sinaloa cartel is primarily involved in the distribution of cocaine, heroin, methamphetamine, marijuana and MDMA. It is also the majority supplier of illicit fentanyl to North America. As of 2017, the Sinaloa cartel is the most active drug cartel involved in smuggling illicit drugs into the United States and trafficking them throughout the country. After the arrest of Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, the cartel is now headed by Ismael Zambada Garcia, a.k.a. El Mayo, and Guzman's sons, Alfredo Guzman Salazar, Ovidio Guzman and Ivan Archivaldo Guzman Salazar. As of 2020, the Sinaloa cartel remains Mexico's most dominant drug cartel. However, Various sources allege that internal conflicts for the cartel's leadership have currently broken out between the Guzman and Zambada factions of the organization. Background Pedro Aviles Perez was a pioneer drug lord in the Mexican state of Sinaloa in the late 1960s. He is considered to be the first generation of major Mexican drug smugglers of marijuana who marked the birth of large-scale Mexican drug trafficking. He also pioneered the use of aircraft to smuggle drugs to the United States. Second generation seen alone traffickers such as Rafael Caro Quintero, Ernesto Fonseca Carrillo, Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo and Aviles Perez nephew Joaquin El Chapo Guzman would claim they learned all they knew about narco-traffickants while serving in the Aviles organization. Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo, who eventually founded the Guadalajara Cartel, was arrested in 1989 and, while incarcerated, he remained one of Mexico's major traffickers maintaining contact with his organization via mobile phone until he was transferred to a new maximum security prison in the 1990s. At that point his nephews, the Arellano Felix brothers, left and created their own organization which came to be known as the Tijuana Cartel, while the Sinaloa Cartel continued to be run by former lieutenants Hector Luis Palmas Salazar, Adrian Gomez Gonzalez and Joaquin Guzman Lora, El Chapo. Leadership. The Sinaloa cartel used to be known as La Alianza de Sangre, Blood Alliance. When Hector Luis Palma Salazar, aka El Guero Palma, was arrested on the 23rd of June 1995 by the Mexican army, his partner Joaquin Guzman Lora took leadership of the cartel. Guzman was captured in Guatemala on the 9th of June 1993 and extradited to Mexico, where he was jailed in a maximum security prison, but on the 19th of January 2001, Guzman escaped and resumed his command of the Sinaloa cartel. Guzman has two close associates, Ismael Zambada Garcia and Ignacio Corona Villarreal. Guzman and Zambada became Mexico's top drug kingpins in 2003, after the arrest of their rival Ogiel Cardenas Gillen of the Gulf Cartel. Another close associate, Javier Torres Felix, was arrested and extradited to the U.S. in December 2006. 
On 29 July 2010, Ignacio Corona was killed in a shootout with the Mexican military in Zapopan. Jalisco.Guzman was captured on the 22nd of February 2014 overnight by American and Mexican authorities. On the 11th of July 2015, he escaped from the Federal Social Readaption Center No. 1, a maximum security prison in the state of Mexico, through a tunnel in his prison cell. Guzman resumed his command of the Sinaloa cartel, but on the 8th of January 2016, Guzman was captured again during a raid on a home in the city of Los Mochis, in Guzman's home state of Sinaloa. With the arrest of Joaquin Guzman Lora, Ismael Zambada will most likely assume leadership of the Sinaloa cartel. On the 24th of June 2020, Zambada was revealed to be sick with diabetes, which gave El Chapo's sons more influence over the Sinaloa cartel. This also ended an attempt to recruit former high-ranking Mexican drug lords Rafael and Miguel Caro Quintero as members of the Sinaloa cartel due to the refusal of El Chapo's sons to grant them leadership status. Under Zambada's leadership, the Sinaloa cartel had been willing to negotiate potential leadership for the Caro Quintero brothers. Operations The Sinaloa cartel has a presence in 17 of the 31 Mexican states, with important centers in Mexico City, Tepic, Toluca, Chacatcas, Guadalajara, and most of the states of Sinaloa. The cartel is primarily involved in the smuggling and distribution of Colombian cocaine, Mexican marijuana, Methamphetamine and Mexican and Southeast Asian heroin into the United States. It is believed that a group known as the Herrera Organization would transport multi ton quantities of cocaine from South America to Guatemala on behalf of the Sinaloa cartel. From there, it is smuggled north to Mexico and later into the U.S. Other shipments of cocaine are believed to originate in Colombia from Cali and Medellin drug trafficking groups from which the Sinaloa cartel handle transportation across the U.S. border order to distribution cells in Arizona, California, Illinois, Texas, New York, and Washington State. Before his arrest, Vicente Zambada Nibla, El Vicentillo, son of Ismael Zambada Garcia, El Mayo, played a key role in the Sinaloa cartel. Vicente Zambada was responsible for coordinating multi-ton cocaine shipments from Central and South American countries through Mexico and into the United States for the Sinaloa cartel. To accomplish this task he used every means available, Boeing, 747, cargo aircraft, narco submarines, container ships, go-fast boats, fishing vessels, buses, rail cars, tractor trailers and automobiles. He was arrested by the Mexican army on the 18th of March 2009 and extradited on the 18th of February 2010 to Chicago to face federal charges. He filed a guilty plea agreement and agreed to cooperate with government on the 8th of November 2018.In the late 1980s, the United States Drug Enforcement Administration believed the Sinaloa cartel was the largest drug trafficking organization operating in Mexico. By the mid-1990s, according to one court opinion, it was believed to be the size of the Medellin cartel during its prime. The Sinaloa cartel was believed to be linked to the Juarez cartel in a strategic alliance following the partnership of their rivals, the Gulf cartel and Tijuana cartel. Following the discovery of a tunnel system used to smuggle drugs across the Mexican-U.S. border, the group has been associated with such means of trafficking. By 2005, the Beltran Leyva brothers, who were formerly aligned with the Sinaloa cartel, had come to dominate drug trafficking across the border with Arizona. By 2006, the Sinaloa cartel had eliminated all competition across the 528 kilometers of Arizona border. The Milino, Michoacan, Jalisco, Guadalajara, Sonora, Sonora, and Colima cartels are now branches of the Sinaloa cartel. At this time the organization was laundering money at global scale, mainly through British bank HSBC. In January 2008 the cartel allegedly split into a number of warring factions, which is a major cause of the epidemic of drug violence Mexico has seen in the last year. 
Murders by the cartel often involve beheadings or bodies dissolved in vats of alkali and are sometimes filmed and posted on the internet as a warning to rival gangs. As of 2013, the Sinaloa cartel continues to dominate the Sonora Arizona corridor, which extends for nearly 375 miles. It relies on eight plaza bosses, leaders of a specific geographic region along a corridor, to coordinate, direct, and support the flow of narcotics north into the United States. Key cities along the corridor include the Mexicali Plaza, San Luis Rio Colorado Plaza, Sinoida Plaza, Nogales Plaza, and the Agua Prieta Plaza. The Tucson and Phoenix, Arizona metropolitan areas are major transshipment and distribution points for the cartel in the U.S. To coordinate operations in the Southeast U.S., Atlanta has emerged as a major distribution center and accounting hub and the presence of the Sinaloa cartel there has brought ruthless violence to that area. Chicago continues to be a major Sinaloa distribution point for the Midwest, taking advantage of a strong local demand market and convergence of several major interstate systems that offer distribution throughout the U.S. The cartel also benefited for a long time of easiness in cash transactions and money laundering through banks with presence both in the U.S. and Mexico like HSBC.In 2013, the Chicago Crime Commission named Joaquin Chapo Guzman, public enemy number one of a city Guzman has never set foot in. He is the only individual to receive the title since Al Capone. The focal point for Sinaloa in Chicago is the city's little village neighborhood. From this strategic point, the cartel distributes their product at the wholesale level to dozens of local street gangs, as much as two metric tons a month, in a city with over 120,000 documented gang members. The Gangster Disciples are one of the local gangs most actively working with the cartel. The cartel's attempts to control the Chicago drug market have brought them into direct conflict with other Chicago gangs, including the Black Pea Stones, Vice Lords and black disciples, resulting in an increase in violence in the city. The Sinaloa cartel has operations in the Philippines as a transshipment point for drugs smuggled into the United States. Since 2013, the cartel has been operating in the Philippines after a raid on a ranch in Lipa, but in gas, according to a statement by Philippine Drug Enforcement Agency, PDEA Director General Arthur Kakdak, and have entered the country without notice. President Rodrigo Duterte further confirmed the presence of the Sinaloa cartel in the Philippines, saying that the cartel uses the country as a transshipment point for drugs smuggled into the United States. The presence of the cartel in the Philippines has worsened the ongoing war between drug lords, drug cartels and the government in that country. On the 4th of July 2019, Juan Ulysses Galvan Carmona, alias, El Buda, was killed by two hitmen in a convenience store in Chatuumo, the capital of Quintana Roo State along Mexico's Caribbean coast. El Buda served as the leader of the Sinaloa cartel's drug trafficking activities and shipments from Central and South America. Arrest and seizures on the 11th of May 2008, Alfonso Gutierrez Lora, cousin of Joaquin, El Chapo Guzman Lora, and five other drug traffickers were arrested after a shootout with federal police officers in Culiacan, Sinaloa. Along with the captured suspects, 16 assault rifles, 3 grenades, 102 magazines and 3,543 rounds of ammunition were seized. On the 25th of February 2009, the U.S. government announced the arrest of 750 members of the Sinaloa cartel across the U.S. in Operation Accelerator. They also announced the seizure of more than $59 million in cash and numerous vehicles, planes, and boats. In March 2009, the Mexican government announced the deployment of 1,000 federal police officers and 5,000 Mexican army soldiers to restore order in Ciudad Juarez, which has suffered the highest number of casualties in the country. On the 20th of August 2009, the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration (DEA) broke up a large Mexican drug operation in Chicago and uncovered a major distribution network operated by the Flores crew led by twin brothers Margarito and Pedro Flores that operated there.
The drug operation allegedly brought 1.5 to 2 tons of cocaine every month to Chicago from Mexico and shipped millions of dollars south of the border. The shipments were mostly bought from the Sinaloa cartel and at times from the Beltran Leva cartel, and it is assumed that both cartels threatened the Flores crew with violence if they bought from other rival drug organizations. The Mexican Secretary of National Defense, Sadina, reported the arrest of Jesus Alfredo Salazar Ramirez, alias El Monico or El Pelos, who was identified as the current lieutenant of the South Pacific Cartel in the state of Sonora. As stated by Sadina, El Monico worked as an administrator under Joaquin El Chapo Guzman and is believed to be responsible for the death of the activist Napomuceno Moreno. Jesus Alfredo Salazar Ramirez was arrested the 1st of November 2012 in the municipality of Hiuxquiluacan by military personnel working with the Mexican Attorney General's office, PGR. El Monico is considered to be one of the most important lieutenants of Joaquin Guzman Lora, evident from his control of the planting, production, and trafficking of drugs in Sonora and in the mountains of Chihuahua, which were sent predominantly to the U.S. He is linked to various homicides, among them the lawyer Ruben Alejandro Cepeda Leos, who was assassinated the 20th of December 2011 in the city of Chihuahua, Chihuahua. According to the Sedina, he is the assumed assassin of activist Napomuceno Moreno Nunes, which occurred the 28th of November 2011. Napomuceno Moreno was an activist who sought justice for the disappearance of his son and joined the Mexican Indignados movement, led by the poet Javier Cecilia. Jose Rodrigo Arquigo Gamboa, alias Chino Antrax, was a high-ranking member of the Sinaloa cartel. He was a leader and founding member of Los Antrax, an armed squadron formed to protect Ismael Almeo Zambada Garcia, founding member of the Sinaloa cartel. He was arrested the 30th of December 2013 at the Amsterdam Airport Schiphol in the Netherlands, at the petition of the United States of America and with the help of Interpol, on charges related to drug trafficking. The Sinaloa cartel's loss of partners in Mexico does not appear to have affected its ability to smuggle drugs from South America to the USA. On the contrary, based on seizure reports, the Sinaloa cartel appears to be the most active smuggler of cocaine. The reports also demonstrated the cartels possess the ability to establish operations in previously unknown areas, such as Central America and South America, even as far south as Peru, Paraguay and Argentina. It also appears to be most active in diversifying its export markets. Rather than relying solely on U.S. drug consumption, it has made an effort to supply distributors of drugs in Latin American and European countries. On the 19th of December 2013, the Federal Police of Mexico killed Gonzalo El Macho Prieto in Zunza in a gun battle in Puerto Penasco, Sonora. Injunza was believed to be one of Joaquin El Chapo Guzman's chief cartel leaders. In December 2013, three suspected members of the cartel were arrested in Lipa in Batangas province in the Philippines with 84 kilograms of methamphetamine. In February 2014, El Chapo Guzman was arrested. The capture of the Sinaloa cartels, El Chapo Guzman ignited a fight over the trial's location. Calls for his extradition to the United States started just hours after his arrest. Guzman also faces federal indictment in several locations including San Diego, New York, and Texas, among other places. On the 11th of July 2015, El Chapo escaped from a maximum security prison, which is his second successful jailbreak from a maximum security facility in 14 years. On the 8th of January 2016, Guzman was arrested again during a raid on a home in the city of Los Mochis, in Guzman's home state of Sinaloa. Current alliances since February 2010, the major cartels have aligned in two factions, one integrated by the Juarez Cartel, Tijuana Cartel and Los Zetas, the other faction integrated by the Gulf Cartel and Sinaloa Cartel.
In addition to maintaining its anti-Zetas alliance with the Gulf Cartel, Sinaloa in 2011 affiliated itself with the Knights Templar in Michoacan. And to counter Los Zetas in Jalisco State, Sinaloa affiliated itself with the Jalisco New Generation Cartel. The Sinaloa Federation has formed alliances with two powerful Chinese triads, Sun Yian and the 14K Triad, to acquire the precursor chemicals needed in creating highly addictive synthetic drugs like methamphetamines. Operatives like local gangs pick up the chemicals from drop-off points and ship them to hidden labs. The resulting products are shipped to the United States and many South American countries. Tijuana Airport Drug Super Tunnels In 1989, the Sinaloa cartel dug its first drug tunnel between the house in Agua Prieta, Sonora to a warehouse located in Douglas, Arizona. The 300-foot tunnel was discovered in May. 1990. Following the discovery by U.S. Customs and Mexican Federal Police, the Sinaloa cartel began to focus their smuggling operations towards Tijuana and Ote Mesa, San Diego where it acquired a warehouse in 1992. After the assassination of Cardinal Juan Jesus Posadas Ocampo and six others at the Guadalajara airport on the 24th of May 1993, the gunman boarded a commercial jet. When the jet landed at the Tijuana airport, both police and military units failed to cordon off the aircraft and the gunman escaped. On the 31st of May 1993, Mexican federal agents searching for the gunman found a partially completed 1,500-foot tunnel adjacent to the Tijuana airport and crossing under the U.S.-Mexico border to a warehouse on Ote Mesa in San Diego. It was discovered as Mexican and San Diego officials were discussing the creation of a cross-border airport between Tijuana and Ote Mesa, which would have undermined the drug tunneling operations in the area. See History of the Cross-Border Express. The tunnel was described by the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration, DEA, in San Diego as the Taj Mahal of drug tunnels along the U.S.-Mexico border and was linked to Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. It was five times longer than the Agua Prieta Douglas Tunnel and became the first of a series of drug super tunnels in Ote Mesa originating in and around the Tijuana Airport through the former Ejido Tampico. The super tunnels were equipped with power, ventilation and rail tracks to allow the efficient movement of large loads of narcotics across the U.S.-Mexico border. As seen on image 1 drug tunnel corridors the close proximity of the former Ejido Tampico to the Tijuana airport and U.S.-Mexico border made it an ideal staging area for smuggling operations into the United States. The Mexican government's conflict with the former Ejido Tampico dated back to 1970, when they expropriated 320 hectares, 790 acres of the Ejido Tampico to build a new runway and passenger terminal at the Tijuana airport and agreed to pay the displaced Ejidinarios, the communal farmers, $1.4 million pesos, $112,000 U.S. dollars in 1970. When the Mexican government failed to indemnify the Ejidinarios for their lost farmland, they reoccupied a 79 hectares, 200 acres portion of the Tijuana airport and threatened armed conflict. As shown by image 2 Ejido Tampico, from 1970 to 2000, the occupied land at the Tijuana airport remained relatively undeveloped. In 1999, the Tijuana airport was privatized and became part of a 12-airport network known as Grupo Aeroportuario del Pacifico, Pacific Airport Group. In an attempt to resolve the dispute and remove the Ejidinarios from the privatized Tijuana airport, the Mexican government established a value on the expropriated 320 hectares, 790 acres at $1.2 million pesos, $125,560 U.S. dollars in 1999, while the Ejidinarios of the former Ejido Tampico, taking into account the increase in property values from 1970 to 1999 and the privatization of the Tijuana Airport established a commercial value on their lost land and at $2.8 billion pesos, $294 million U.S. dollars. In 2002, Mexican President Vicente Fox, who had promised to resolve the issue, also failed. As shown image 2 Ejido Tampico comparison between 2000 and 2006, 
the Agenarios then proceeded to commercially develop the 79 hectares, 200 acres area at the Tijuana airport by leasing buildings and parcels to trucking and storage companies. As shown by Image 3 Drug Trafficking Tunnel, in 2006 the unpermitted development allowed the building of a 2,400-foot, 730-meter drug super tunnel originating from the former Ejido Tampico and adjacent to the Tijuana Airport's runway. As prior drug tunnels, it crossed under the U.S.-Mexico border into a warehouse on Ote Mesa and San Diego with the capacity to move multi-ton loads of narcotics. Similar to the Taj Mahal of drug tunnels discovered on Ote Mesa in 1993, the 2006 drug super tunnel was traced back to the Sinaloa cartel. With unregulated trucking and warehouse operations, the former Ejido Tampico became a major distribution point for narcotics being moved into the United States. In the ensuing years, drug tunnels moving tons of narcotics were detected in and around the Tijuana airport. The former Ejido Tampico also continued to expand its unpermitted development and more drug tunnels were discovered operating within its boundary to warehouses located on Ote Mesa and San Diego, California. In 2011, at the westerly end of the Tijuana airport a 1,800-foot, 550-meter drug super tunnel was discovered dug under the airport's 1028 runway from a warehouse located 980 feet. 300 meters from Mexico's 12th military air base and 330 feet, 100 meters from a Mexican federal police station. As with prior super tunnels, it was equipped with an elevator and electric rail cars to efficiently ferry narcotics across the U.S.-Mexico border. In December 2016, one month prior Joaquin El Chapo Guzman Lora's extradition to the U.S. Two super tunnels one in operation while the other was under construction, were discovered by Mexican agents adjacent to the Tijuana Airport Ejido Tampico and the Ote Mesa border crossing. Both were associated with the Sinaloa cartel. On the 21st of June 2017, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman's girlfriend and former legislator of the state of Sinaloa, Lucero Guadalupe Sanchez Lopez, was arrested at the Tijuana Airport's cross-border express by CBP, U.S. Customs and Border Protection officers as she crossed into the U.S. She was charged with drug conspiracy and money laundering, and had been with Joaquin Guzman when he escaped capture in 2014. Allegations of collusion with Mexican federal government forces in May 2009, the U.S. National Public Radio NPR aired multiple reports alleging that the Mexican federal police and military were working in collusion with the Sinaloa cartel. In particular, the report claimed the government was helping the Sinaloa cartel to take control of the Juarez Valley area and destroy other cartels, especially the Juarez cartel. NPR's reporters interview dozens of officials and ordinary people for the journalistic investigation. One report quotes a former Juarez police commander who claimed the entire department was working for the Sinaloa cartel and helping it to fight other groups. He also claimed that the Sinaloa cartel had bribed the military. Also quoted was a Mexican reporter who claimed hearing numerous times from the public that the military had been involved in murders. Another source in the story was the U.S. trial of Manuel Fierro Mendez, an ex Juarez police captain who admitted to working for the Sinaloa cartel. He claimed that the Sinaloa cartel influenced the Mexican government and military in order to gain control of the region. A U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration agent in the same trial alleged that Fierro Mendez had contact with a Mexican military officer. The report also alleged, with support from an anthropologist who studies drug trafficking, that data on the low arrest rate of Sinaloa cartel members, compared to other groups, was evidence of favoritism on the part of the authorities. A Mexican official denied the allegation of favoritism and the DEA agent and a political scientist also had alternate explanations for the arrest data. Another report detailed numerous indications of corruption and influence that the cartel has within the Mexican government. Allegations of collusion with the U.S. federal government in 2012, 
Newsweek reported about allegations from an anonymous former Sinaloa member turned informant and former DEA agents that alleged that Joaquin Guzman's legal advisor, Humberto Loya Castro, had become a key informant for the DEA. Loya Castro had become an official informant of the DEA in 2005 but was already providing vital information on rival cartels since the 1990s. Such intel was instrumental to the takedown of the Tijuana cartel, the Sinaloa cartel's main rival, as well as the death of Arturo Beltran Leyva, who led a splinter group from the Sinaloa cartel. Such information ensured Loya Castro was immune from prosecution while also keeping the DEA concentrated on Sinaloa's rivals and away from their leadership. Such allegations were confirmed by court documents obtained by El Universal during their investigation of collaboration with top officials from the Sinaloa cartel. According to court documents, the DEA had struck agreements with the cartel's leadership that would ensure that they would be immune from extradition and prosecution in the U.S. and would avoid disrupting the cartel's drug operations in exchange for intelligence which could be used against other drug cartels. Statements from a Mexican diplomat, which were revealed from leaked emails from the Stratford leak in 2012 appeared to imply the belief amongst Mexican officials that U.S. officials were assisting the Sinaloa cartel's drug smuggling efforts into the U.S. and were protecting the cartel while attacking its rivals in an attempt to lower violence between Mexican drug cartels. This was backed up by information provided by a Mexican foreign agent, codenamed MX-1. The allegation that U.S. officials were controlling the drug trade through Mexico was perpetuated by the former spokesman of the state of Chihuahua, Guillermo Terrazas Villanueva. In March 2015, BBC TV program This World broadcast an episode entitled Secrets of Mexico's Drug War, which reported on the U.S. government's Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives Operation Fast and Furious which had allowed licensed firearms dealers to sell weapons to illegal buyers acting on behalf of Mexican drug cartel leaders, in particular the Sinaloa cartel. The BBC also reported on Vicente Zambada Nayibla's claims of immunity from prosecution under a deal between the Mexican and U.S. governments and his claims that the Sinaloa cartel's leaders had provided U.S. federal agents with information about rival Mexican drug gangs. In the same documentary it is shown that the U.S. Justice Department invoked national security reasons to prevent Humberto Loya Castro, the lawyer of the Sinaloa syndicate from being summoned as a witness to the trial against Vicente Zambada Nibla. Battling the Tijuana Cartel The Sinaloa Cartel has been waging a war against the Tijuana Cartel, Arellano Felix Organization, over the Tijuana smuggling route to the border city of San Diego, California. The rivalry between the two cartels dates back to the Miguel Angel Felix Gallardo setup of Palma's family. Felix Gallardo, following his imprisonment, bestowed the Guadalajara cartel to his nephews in the Tijuana cartel. On the 8th of November 1992, Palma struck out against the Tijuana cartel at a disco club in Puerto Vallarta, Jalisco, where eight Tijuana cartel members were killed in the shootout, the Arellano Felix brothers having successfully escaped from the location with the assistance of David D. Barron, a member of the Logue Heights gang. In retaliation, the Tijuana cartel attempted to set up Guzman at Guadalajara Airport on the 24th of May 1993. In the shootout that followed, six civilians were killed by the hired gunmen from Logue Heights. The dead included Roman Catholic Cardinal Juan Jesus Posadas Ocampo. The church hierarchy originally believed Posadas was targeted as revenge for his strong stance against the drug trade. However, Mexican officials believe Posadas just happened to be caught in crossfire. The Cardinal arrived at the airport in a white Mercury Grand Marquis town car, known to be popular amongst drug barons. Baron had received intelligence that Guzman would be arriving in a white Mercury Grand Marquis town car. Evidence that runs counter to a mistake theory is that Posadas did not look anything like Guzman. He was wearing a long black cassock and a large pectoral cross and he was gunned down from only two feet away. Recently, it is believed that the Tijuana cartel, 
or at least a sizable majority of it, has been either absorbed or forced to ally with the Sinaloa Federation, in part due to a former high-ranking Tijuana member called Eduardo Teodoro Garcia Simental, alias, LTO or, Trace Letras, aligning with the Federation. Edgar Valdez Villarreal Los Negros have been known to employ gangs such as the Mara Salvatrucha to carry out murders and other illegal activities. The group is involved in fighting in the Nuevo Laredo region for control of the drug trafficking corridor. Following the 2003 arrest of Gulf Cartel leader Ogil Cardenas Gillen, it is believed the Sinaloa Cartel moved 200 men into the region to battle the Gulf Cartel for control. The Nuevo Laredo region is an important drug trafficking corridor into Laredo, Texas, where as much as 40% of all Mexican exports passed through into the U.S. following the 2004 assassination of journalist Roberto Javier Mora Garcia from El Mañana newspaper. Much of the local media has been cautious about their reporting of the fighting. The cartels have pressured reporters to send messages and wage a media war. The drug war has spread to various regions of Mexico, such as Guerrero, Mexico City, Michoacan and Tamaulipas. On 30 August 2010, Villarreal was captured by Mexican federal police. In popular culture the Sinaloa cartel has in both recent and past times, most often been the primary drug cartel that is associated with narcoculture in Mexico. The organization has also become the subject of several documentaries, such as Cartel Land, Locked Up Abroad, The Shabu Trap, Clandestino and several others. The most well-known leader of the Sinaloa cartel, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, has been portrayed in various films and series, such as El Chapo in Narcos, Mexico, books, such as Confessions of a Cartel Hitman and music, most notoriously in the Narcocorritos. In the Rush Hour episode Welcome Back, Carter, 1 by 06, the Sinaloa cartel is led by Alyssa Montoya, Lisa Rao Umain, the episode's main villainess. The Sinaloa cartel are the main antagonists of 2018 film The Mule, starring Clint Eastwood. In this film, the cartel is led by Leighton, Andy Garcia and later by Gustavo, Clifton Collins Jr. Leighton's murderer. Felix Reyes Torrena, Javier Bardem, one of the main antagonists of 2004 film Collateral, is implied to be the leader of the Sinaloa cartel. The Netflix series Queen of the South depicts fictional events dealing with the Sinaloa cartel and its interconnections with the U.S. drug smuggling. In the Mentalist Season 5 episode Red and Itchy, 5 by 21, it is revealed that the leader of the Sinaloa cartel is a powerful and dangerous drug trafficker named Miguel Leva. See also References External link Sinaloa cartel profile on Insight Crime Joaquin, El Chapo, Guzman Laura on America's Most Wanted Jose Espinoza, the Leonardo da Vinci of the Sinaloa cartel, San Francisco Chronicle. The 1st of November 2009, Why Mexico's Sinaloa Cartel Loves Selling Drugs in Chicago, Chicago Magazine, October 2013 Money Laundering Takedown.